Hi, in this video I will take you through how to find the optimum hyperparameter values for your addition tree model using training and validation data set. Let's get our imports. So we're getting matplotlib for our plotting, addition uh, tree regressor, we're getting it from sklearn. We're having pandas, numpy for our usual operations and then preprocessing also being imported. Along with it we're getting a graph whisk for our outputs of the addition tree and RE is for our regular expression operations. Let's load a very simple regression tree data set that we have cooked up. So in this particular case we're getting it from this file DT stock data regress and it has four features. The economic condition, global market performance, RBA support, buyer sentiment and then this last feature number of stocks down is our regression target and as you can see it's all continuous values. Rest of all the features I've intentionally kept them as categorical features so that we will have to encode them before being used by SKLearn addition tree regressor. Okay let's now move on. These are the four features which we are now assigning to our X and then the Y is our target which is the number of stocks down in percentages. We have to do an encoding of these categorical variables, categorical values. So what we do is we take all the unique values in all these four columns, put them into a list, which is exactly what we call as a total categorical values list, where we take unique values for each of the column and then we have concatenated into this list. And that list now is this entire list, including recession, doom, uncertainty, so and so, so and so, S and no other last two values. Next, we'll convert these categorical values into a numerical representation and in this case we're going to be using a label encoder. So we create an instance of a label encoder which is in the sklearn preprocessing package and we are running a fit on these values which is in our uh, variable total categorical values. Following that we create new data frames x train and y train data frames to which we now do a transform from our original data frame so we're transforming these categorical values into their corresponding numerical representations which get stored in x train y train continues to be unchanged so y train is just the y value that i have now if you see the if i'm printing the x train and y train you do see x train has changed from categorical values values now you have numerical representations of the same yeah and these are my y values which are percentages of stocks down. I'm going to do a visualization of the mappings I've done which means what was the categorical value that I converted into what number. So that's what we are trying to look into and that we do it using the label encoders instance dot classes and label in encoders instance which is le main dot transform for the given classes. So that would give me the corresponding categorical values and the encoded values are that are stored inside the LE main. Next, we will load the validation data set. So in this context, because we're going to be finding out our hyperparameters, we have to load the validation data set. So I do have a very small validation data set. Again, I made it up just with three particular uh, rows only, but that is to give you a, a feel for what we are going to be uh, playing around with. So we load that up and we are getting the data into our x test to y test variables we are doing transformation using the same instance of the label encoder remember this is important you are not going to do any fit using the validation data set or test data set but you will use the encoded instance the, the encoding actually had happened using the training data set you will use the same one to transform your validation data set so that's what I've done here this line of code and these lines are doing the same transformation and then finally I have my X test which is my validation data set and my Y test ready so if you look at what my X test is again it's three rows of encoded values and my Y test is these values that are printed here okay so now we're gonna move over to model building and before that we do one small function which is going to help us calculate the total absolute error for our given addition tree model. 
okay so for that what do we need we need our data for x we need our data for y and we also need the model that we have already prepared an instance of the model and we are going to be using predictions from that model and then do a y predicted value and a y value which is the actual value minus predicted value that's going to be our errors okay so we are returning from this function some of the absolute errors across all the rows in our input data which is x underscore t okay so this is a very generic function in that context let us try prepare our model and then we'll use this function continuously iteratively to validate how how the model performs then we go ahead and then we are going to now be having a loop in this particular loop first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one hyperparameter by the name tree depth so this is the maximum depth we are interested the tree to be in therefore this is the max tree depth parameter that we are gonna be now finding an ideal value for so let's do that what do we do we are going in a loop for 1 to 7 so this is an arbitrary value I've chosen where uh, these are all the values of the depth so it can be having a depth of 1 depth of 2 depth of 3 depth of 4 depth of 5 depth of 6 and depth of 7 that's kind of the iteration I'm going in and for each of those values I'm building an addition tree regressor for the corresponding max depth value given in that loop okay and I'm fitting the X train and Y train values that we have earlier prepared which is preparing our model and I'm getting the absolute total sum of errors for this iteration and I'm storing it in this in this particular um, list okay so I have three lists one I'm storing it for my training data another one I'm storing it for my validation data and I'm also keeping track of the of the actual depth for which the evaluation has happened okay so that's what the simple piece of loop is doing following that I do plot that okay so I'm plotting it using matplotlib I'm preparing an axis so I'm plotting two two particular data data points one is I'm plotting it for test data point which is our validation another one is for the training data point okay so having done that let's look at this chart so this chart is an important one for us to understand how to decide what is the right tree depth to choose in this current context so if you see here we in the x-axis we have max tree depth the y-axis we have the total errors for each of those iterations and we have plotted two lines one is the green line which is our validation data set and then one is a training data set which is shown in the yellow line what is very clear is as we increase the tree depth which means we're giving more and more liberty for the model to add more and more tree depth the total errors come down so that is very obvious and that makes complete sense which ensures that we can validate how our training has happened but what is also important to note is that there is a contrary to that rule which is you can see in the validation data set is that up to three depths I had my errors reduced but following the third depth which means when a depth was four the actual errors have increased and they continue to stay increased now that is a sign that we are overfitting the model when we start having depth anything from four and above okay so therefore we are looking for a val a point up to which there is a good amount of error reduction but a point like three is our ideal point and a point like four is not ideal because following three we have the errors actually increasing okay so therefore three being the max depth is ideal for our given data set which is what we have calibrated it understanding both training chart curve and the testing or the validation uh, data's lines which is in green and yellow respectively okay so let's move on now and take a look at another hyperparameter which is the minimum samples leaves so this hyperparameter controls how many leaf samples or how many number of leaves are allowed at a minimum for this tree to be built we're going to do the same operation as we did before but now the hyperparameter min samples leaf is being controlled we are not controlling if you can see here the depth parameter that parameter we finished up here we found the ideal value and then we are going to be moving on okay so we have no constraint on the depth parameter and we're doing the pretty much the same thing which is we are building in the minimum sample leaves for an iteration of one to seven 
we're building in the model fitting it and we're calculating the total absolute errors for both training and also for validation we're storing it in a list and then subsequently I'm plotting it in the list okay so after I've done that let us take a look at this chart so this is for my minimum leaves if you see in x-axis that shows me the number of minimum leaves that I've let the model be built with and then my y is my total errors we can very clearly see as I let the system have more and more leaves be there obviously the errors are keep increasing so if you think about it if the model has got many leaves that it can have then the errors are actually increasing in our context that's because we only have a limited set of data and thus it is fairly proportional but when I'm constraining the leaves on the validation data set much much lower what I do see is that the errors are starting to flatten out before it actually starts to increase therefore I'm looking at this point of 4 to be an ideal point of minimum leaf size following which the errors are actually increasing okay so that's the overall idea with identifying the right hyperparameters for your addition tree model now obviously you can export your tree using a tree dot export text function which is gained in sklearn and given a model it will basically be printing you out how the model has or the tree was built okay so use these two hyperparameters and, and there are a few other hyperparameters also but use these methods to calibrate what is the right hyperparameters and that's what we do in practice also okay